This is Backrooms Lost for Windows PC, released in July 2024 by 2G Games. This is a liminal horror game experience, and from the get-go I'm going to say that I really like this game, and I appreciate the style. I actually appreciate all the Backrooms games I've seen so far. My gripes with this particular one are pretty minor, and I know that this is being actively worked on, and likely my frustrations will be fixed pretty soon. I'm only maybe just over halfway through this game, and all my criticism is pretty basic. Backrooms games are designed to be basically scary escape rooms. We're in an alternate dimension and we're trying to figure out some sort of a puzzle just to escape the level. Some levels are certainly more difficult than others and some have monsters in them that you're going to have to figure out how to avoid. It's designed to be restricted, claustrophobic, bleak, scary, with creepy sounds, geometry that doesn't always make sense, and basically there's a lack of logic in some places. I think this is the general setting and it's very cosmic horror at its core. There are also a lot of games in this space, and if you like horror games, you should probably start checking them out. Once again, we're in beta, so things are changing. The first thing that I ran into with this game is that it's being localized in English. I'm guessing Chinese is the development group's language, because that's what it sort of indicates in Steam. So we have English errors, and as a result, we get a lot of confusion. First, I think the company title is unclear. Steam says 2G Games, T-U-J-I. When the game loads, this is their graphic. I see this 2G game graphic as being read multiple different ways. If the end of this logo was supposed to be an I, that means that there could be an I earlier in the logo. As a result, this word to me says it's either T-U-J-I, T-U-J-U, T-I-T-I, T-U-I, T-U-I. I don't know which spelling is correct. And to me, that's a problem. Confusion with your company name is bad. You want people to know exactly what your company name is so they can find you. The actual title of the game is also confusing. Steam says this is Backrooms Lost with a colon in the middle. I think having any dashes or symbols in your game title is dangerous. If I describe the name of this game to a friend and they type this in, are they going to have that symbol as well? I'm probably not going to tell them it's Backrooms colon Lost. If you want your game to be found, the title needs to be unique logical and easy to find, and this means simplicity. Any dash, colon, or non-letter character in your title could be a problem for search engines, and I just wouldn't want to take that chance. Also, if you type Backrooms into Steam, we get a very long list of related titles. You need to be very clear in this list, and on the web in general. In my Steam list, it says the game is called Backrooms Lost, and as I look through the pages, and the game itself, it is referenced differently almost every time. Backrooms Lost with a capital B and R in Backrooms, and there's a colon. On the same page, it also says Lost Backrooms. Then in game, we see Lost Backrooms with Lost on the right of the logo. I also see Backroom Lost with no colon in a capital B and R and missing an S. Then Lost Backrooms on the exact same page. Another Lost Backrooms, another Backroom Lost, and Backrooms, colon, Lost, only with a capital B. The direction English speakers read is top left to right and then down to the next row. So if you have a graphical logo and you start moving around any of those words, it's going to change the title. I think both the company logo and the game title have to be very clear and the exact same in every instance. Don't give anyone a reason to be confused, to not find it, or think this is amateur hour. I would definitely remove the colon from the title that colon thing could just be me, I can admit that, but I think it's a bad choice. In the game, there's also a lack of clarity on some of the menus. First, when you press escape, a game menu appears. This is totally standard, but if I press escape again, nothing happens. I'm expecting to press escape a second time and have that menu close, but it doesn't. If you go into the keybind menu, this is a list of what is supposed to be how we play the game. This is pretty much the only thing that's telling us how to play this game, and it's confusing. It says there are four select slots. There are no select slots that I can find in the game. It says press H for HUD. I can't find an in-game HUD. It says press O to whistle. It sounds like a great idea for a game like this, but it doesn't work in-game yet. And spelling is definitely a pet peeve of mine. I see the word BOTTON, B-O-T-T-O-N, in multiple places in this list, and it should be BUTTON, with a U. For the E button, it says INTERACET, which isn't a word. It should be INTERACT. U-E-S item, I think they mean U-S-E, use item, 
And I know these are minor things, really minor, but if it was cleaned, you would eliminate a huge frustration for new players. These are the only operating instructions I have to play this game. I don't want to decipher anything. On the, on the main game menu, there is a place where you can select the different levels, if you've already unlocked them, which is something that I love. Great idea. But the text here, it's really small to read, and I, I don't like it. It needs a bigger font or better display. I'm playing this on a very large television, and I don't like having to get up and get close to the TV to read things. So some bigger text would be great, and I think it would make a big difference here. Even early in this beta, these little changes would really help. Now, the levels I've seen so far are pretty great, but I think the first two are, in particular, harder to get through than necessary. And there's a difference between having a difficult puzzle to solve and just having the core functions of the level not be smooth enough to the point where they kind of become the problem. I've put more than six hours into getting through two levels, and looking back on what I've done so far, level one and two have some confusions that just don't need to be there. On level one, we start in an elevator. You need to look down, pick up a tape, and put it in the monitor. It plays this awesome, creepy video to set the scene, and I love it. But the graphic is of you picking up a cassette tape. In your menu, it's referenced as a DVD, so I'm guessing this was a stock graphic of some type, but I'm looking at what is clearly a cassette tape. This puzzle also didn't work for me at first. I picked up the cassette, and for some reason it wouldn't go into the machine. I eventually I had to reset the game, but eventually did get it to work. Then the elevator opens, and you're in a hotel of some kind. The puzzle with this level is to wander around and find four statue heads and put them on these podiums. All of the heads look the exact same but they have to go on very specific pedestals, which you would never know. So you're just going to have to try each pedestal until one fits, and I see no logical reason for this to happen. A head should be able to go onto any pedestal. And the first time I played this, I sat in front of a pedestal with the head and tried for 10 minutes to put this thing on that pedestal before I gave up. I was super frustrated because I was wasting time doing the right thing, just not the right thing the exact way the game wanted me to do it. I think if you really want a head to be specific to a specific podium, you have to deepen the puzzle. And you have to make it so you have to analyze each head more closely to learn exactly how they should match to the pedestal. On level 1, you also have to figure out this the meters that are going on with your screen in the bottom left. As it turns out, this is a huge mechanic. The top line is your battery flashlight power, and the bottom is your run stamina. This is not clear on my screen. I had to figure it out. I was not sure for a while. Give me an icon to explain this or a description somewhere. Also, I'd mentioned that you can refill your battery power. I eventually found this power box at the front of the level, but there were no instructions. First it says press E to interact, which I do, and the door opens. Then it says F to interact and R for the power bar. F doesn't seem to do anything when I press it, so why is it there? I'd remove it. And R for power bar. I don't know what power bar means. I think that they, they really mean recharge your flashlight. And when you press R, it doesn't exactly do that. You have to press R repeatedly to recharge, and that isn't intuitive, and I think it should be. I would just change this to press R once, and it fills up your flashlight. Also, in the first level, every time you hover over something you, that you can interact with, you do see this white, a white word, an icon, or a note. It says press E to interact, usually. There's also a little square below the E in the right there. I don't know what the symbol is supposed to mean, but I understand what E is for interacting, and it seems everything you interact with on this level, you're going to press E to interact with it, which includes picking up these heads you need to get through the level. That sets the expectation as to how this game is going to be played, but when you get to level 2, it's not always like this. On level 2, you can pick up items, and it doesn't offer you the E to interact icon. Instead, it might really faintly highlight the item. I think it's something that's confusing, and it should be one way or the other. When you pick up an item in the game, it always needs to look the exact exact same way, regardless of what level you're playing. If you want to use this white text notation, I think you have to do it for everything the whole game. Or just remove it completely and highlight stuff better. I'm also not sure you need these notes at all. It, it literally either would work. Just using both at the same time makes no sense. I did struggle with these mechanics the first few levels, and I was just too long. If the little things were corrected, it would be way smoother, and I could just focus on the level puzzling, which would be great. Level 1, it's really just an uneasy feeling as you're wandering around this sort of weird maze, and there are a couple of jump scares. There's some really good sounds, and they, and they really inserted some awesome music into it that really sort of creeps things out, 
and I appreciate that. It's a pretty good first level. One additional thing I would consider is not preventing somebody from jumping behind a counter. If there's a counter or a, a small obstacle available on a level, or a door is ajar and I, it looks like I can look inside, you have to let me either get behind that counter or push that door open so I can get inside. For this game, walking into an odd room with a mannequin sitting in it all alone would totally work for the story. If you really don't want me to go into a room, you have to put an object in front of it that makes it so visibly it looks like I should be unable to walk inside. Otherwise, I'm going to be frustrated not being able to go into a room. And behind a counter, if I can see the count the behind the counter, I should be able to jump over it. And if I can't, I'm going to wonder why, and it's going to frustrate me. There also might be something off with the camera height, or maybe the scaling. When you're in the elevator, and then after you round a corner and walk up some stairs, it, it kind of feels like your character is only three or four feet tall. I'm wondering if the camera scale is just off a little. A second level had some grief in there too. There are some words on the walls or some posters in various places. They're barely readable. I'm zooming in and I can barely read them. My eyes are fine. It's just things seem a little too faint to read. Also, you start this level in the elevator and you have to get out of it quickly because the doors will close on you and lock you inside. I was writing notes and the doors closed and I was stuck. We get two different fuse puzzles in this particular level with two different fuse types. One fuse box, you have to find the little fuses around the level and plug them into place. The notes say they're called capacitors, but I'm pretty sure they're not. They look like large automotive fuses to me. Maybe change capacitors to fuses? I think they're fuses. The second fuse puzzle, you just have to turn these colored fuses in a particular order. And I managed to pass the puzzle, but I have no idea what the puzzle actually is, and it took me a few tries. I died a lot. There are some faint words written on the wall that you can kind of read that are supposed to explain the puzzle, but I don't understand it. It's it's unclear to me. Also, I was gonna I was gonna whine about not using these valves at the top of these stairs, but after I thought about it, this could either be a hidden puzzle or it could just be a fake puzzle for me to sort of get distracted for a while and get scared, and totally works in either direction. So I just like this room. And I kind of like not knowing what it's supposed to do, but I can move these valves. So, yeah, it's creepy for a reason I can't explain. I think my biggest frustration with the second level is that I can jump over a railing, but I cannot jump back over and I'll get stuck. As soon as I'm over this railing, you can't get back over. And also, if you step off the ledge here, you can't get back up either, so you have to reset the level. If there's ever a small ledge or railing, you got to expect somebody will try to get over it, and in most cases, maybe you should even let them get over it, but you have to make sure they can get back. If there's an obstacle that logically in life I should be able to step over, you should let me. You know, in this case, this is probably an easy fix. You, you just put either, either the jump height has to be changed, or you could put a small object next to the other side of the railing so I could step on it and jump over. That is an easy fix, and it should work, but you don't want me to have to reboot a level because I... I stepped off a ledge and the game won't let me get back up. I think the graphics on this level look particularly great too. There are some photorealistic engines at the beginning of the level that look fantastic, and I just really like the way this looks. We basically get four or five sort of puzzles on this level that you have to get through. I did manage it, but it took me a few hours. I think seeing and picking up the fuses was the tough part, because there's only a tiny green border to highlight them when, you, when you're around them to pick them up. and. I don't know, it's it's so different than how you pick up stuff on the first level that I didn't notice it at first. Once again, identifying and picking stuff up should be the same on every single level. It took me a long time to get through the first two levels just to get to level three, but I did manage it. And the third level, this is way creepier than I expected, and I haven't figured it out yet. It also contains the first monster of the game. When I got here, I was actually a little scared from the start. It's unnerving to step into a new level, I think this is a great idea for a level, and I love it. It's this sort of enclosed, dim office with overgrown plant life hanging around. I just... The style looks great to me. This is the stuff nightmares are made of, and I love it. It's more complex than the other levels so far, and with the monster around, you got to be aware of its location, of course. So far in my wanderings, I can also... I also managed to access at least one machine without being in the room. That was a little weird. I think I broke the geometry plane. But... I really like it, and I'm definitely sticking with it. So, we have a really good-looking puzzle horror game in beta. 
it, it fits the back room's motif, and I like that. I think with a little cleaning and consistency, I think this beta would look and feel even better. We've only got like six rooms so far, and in the six and a half, seven hours I've played, I've only managed to get through three of them. It's not that easy. The puzzles are pretty good so far. I'm definitely going to keep on top of it and check it out as they continue their updates. Well, that's all I have today for Backrooms Lost on Steam. Thanks for taking a look, and I hope to catch you on another video.